Hello and welcome back and today we're going to carry on in part four of Synology's high availability. We've had this experiment going for a few days now and what we're going to do now is I'm going to co commit a read and write action to one of these NASs, the primary NAS, which in this case since the last thing that we did is this device and then when we commit that action I'm going to pull the LAN and uh, heartbeat cable out of our uh, second NAS there that all the data is being written to before it's passed over to see what happens if you have a critical failure in a right operation in a Synology high, avail high availability environment. So hopefully we've got some graphic on screen where we've got my screen in front of me and me on screen. And what I'm going to do is begin transferring files over to um, our second NAS, Admin Test 2. And then we're going to pull the cables out of that bad boy to see what happens. So let's get our file station open. Let's get a load of files. There's about five gig of files in here, I believe. Let's have a look. Properties, five gig, lovely. And we're going to open up some random folder like that one. And we're going to dump these files inside. So these are now going to upload them onto our third NAS that you can't see on screen, the hybrid one that we've created, not the hybrid, the high availability one. And then while that's writing that, I'm going to open that up on screen. I'm going to minimize that. Move that over there, so now you can see the read write, uh, sorry, the write operations in place, and you can see the hardware of these two devices. So during this operation, I am now going to pull heartbeat cable and the LAN cable to see what happens. So straight away, the upload has ceased. So the NAS, and obviously the it, the upload has ceased because the primary NAS that Synology's high availability writes to have now been uh, ceased. And what happens normally in a, read, uh, in a write operation in Synology High Availability is you're not writing to both boxes like this. From what I can understand and what I'm seeing on screen, you write to the first box and then it's transferred over to the second between them, almost instantaneously <coughs> and with the latency displayed on screen. <coughs> so right now, admin test three, the Phantom NAS, is floating around and as you can see, it's now reported failures in all of that writing there with all of those. It's now beeped because what's happening now is admin test, this one, admin test one, is going to become the primary. So that's happening there. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is open up uh, the Synology Assistant to see what's on our network. So as you can see, an auto failover was performed in the cluster admin test three, so the floaty NAS. And despite the fact that we've tried to critically break our, um, our connection in high availability, we can now still access admin test three, that NAS that we've created in a high availability environment. What's interesting is as we have a look here, we look through these two devices, as it transfers over to become the primary, we can have a look here where the files that we were transferring, obviously the files hadn't finished at that point, and right now, this NAS is becoming the admin test three. And from that point, we've now still got access to our NAS. Now, the read-write operation, obviously that has ceased, the read-write operation on that device, because we were writing to the primary and handing over. And this does add a little bit of weight to Synology's UC300, that unified controller rack mount, where what they've done is changed the priority in the architecture. So in that rack mount example, they've got two controller boards, effectively two NASs, that are connected to one pile of storage. In this scenario, of course, we've got two amounts of storage, and the transfer is network-based rather than internally and instant, hence how that device does it in less than 10 seconds. Um, but right now, the network is still connected, and the heartbeat disconnected between these two devices. And if we carry on looking into this device, the upload still resumed on some of those, as we can still see all of those failures for the files that weren't transmitted. And we've opened up this new one, and again, it's mentioned in the failover, but it's a little sad that the uploads hadn't continued, but it is still good that we've got access to the NAS. I was kind of hoping that what I would see is those files carrying on from where we left off just prior to the critical event. What I'm also gonna do now is I'm gonna reconnect this other NAS to show you live on screen what happens. So we're going to reconnect the heartbeat cable and reconnect the network cable to the device that we caused a critical event on. And that should hopefully identify the other NAS server and invite you 
to rebuild the SHA cluster without deleting any files. Now, the idea that most users will be able to readily access an ads is important. You know, if you're running a business around your data storage setup, then you, the last thing you want is IPs to change. The last thing you want is directories to change, user credentials to change, and any number of different things. What's good about Solidity High Availability is in most cases, most users will never ever know there was a problem. It would just have happened in the background and most of your end users, be they clients or other, will not be able to see what has occurred. So what's happening now is because I've reintroduced the first NAS, it's going to rebuild in the back end our um, high availability NAS. Admin test one and two, once again, have reappeared as independent NASs while this takes place, but we can't access these NASs during this operation. The best we can do is go into them and, act, and, and action the recluster. And we can choose which one we want to be the primary. So now high availability is opened up and it's saying that there's a problem with a brain split. And what we can do is resolve them both, add admin test two, and now admin test two will become the slave whereas the previous unit will now become the primary. And then this is something happening in the back end during that reorganization of the two of them when adding the new NAS. Until I added that second NAS back into the cluster, you could still access all of the files and folders. And this will let you in the back end add, maybe I could actually put my password correct, add this NAS back into the fold. And as you can see, it's applying the new network settings to apply the brand new IP and more, and therefore completely rebuild and re-add all of our Synology high availability connectability. And now that is it really, a read-write operation, not quite as slick as I would have hoped, and it definitely isn't good as that uh, um, unified controller we saw at the launch event for Synology 2019. But thank you so much for watching. This will be the last video on these devices for a while. If you do have a query, I'm gonna have these set out for at least another week. So do let me know in the comments if there's any other instances you'd like me to action in a high availability environment. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.